everybody, it's Tyler here at the Midwest Regional, checking team number 2338, Garrett Ford. Garrett Ford is on a tear over the last couple of years, back-to-back -back champions here at the Midwest Regional, and uh, last year also at CIR, Central Illinois Regional, took the Chairman's Award, or now Impact Award as well too. So I can't wait to talk more about this throughout. Take a look at 2338 this year as you're looking for big things. Got a great uh, intake here, an impressive arm as it comes up in the elevator, and they're using Swerve Drive for the first time. Let's talk more about Garrett Ford coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University is looking for talented robotics students who want to continue learning and innovating in a hands-on real-world experience format. Kettering University representatives will be at dozens of FIRST events this season, including the championship. Go to kettering.edu slash FIRST to see which events you can meet a Kettering University representative. FRC competition season is here. Submit your favorite moments to FRC Clips of the Week by each Sunday at discord.gg slash first updates now. Also, the FRC Top 25 poll is open Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern to Monday, 5 p.m. Eastern, where you can vote for your top 25 teams of the week at firstupdatesnow.com slash FRC Top 25. Eric, let's start off talking about your uh, drive chain. Your team is using Swerve for the first time, so I'd love to hear more about that experience. Maybe some advice you have for teams. And I heard you got a little surprise underneath your uh, chassis as well, too. Yeah, this is our first time using Swerve in the competition. We had a little bit of experience from the 2021 game where we were all online, but this is the first time we're using it in person competitions. We have a Falcon 500 running the Swerves with a Neo being able to turn them. Um, we have a reinforced frame this year, so everything stays tight and supported while we're driving. Underneath here, we have our black treads. We're swapping out for blue because we heard that it was more durable, so they wouldn't run out. And then over here, we have, you'll see the red block right here is a block that we put on, so then when we get on the charge station, we would drive up and go off, and we'd sit on this block and then our wheel. That way we can hopefully get a triple charge. What advice do you have teams who are looking at getting into Swerve, uh, maybe for next season as well? Um, I think that getting into Swerve is a little difficult. Uh, there's a lot of challenges with making sure that parts are properly cut and made. We had a few issues this year. Um, we had to rebuy those. But then if you have any extra parts from Mark 3s, if you want to upgrade, we did a few of those. It makes it cheaper. You don't have to buy them, and they are out of stock pretty often. So. You can do that again. Uh, did, did you do Swerve during the off season, or did you just start right at the build season for this? Uh, we started Swerve at the build season, basically. Wow. Yeah, we had, I think, a little bit beforehand. Um, we had one or two, and then we bought them all and started putting them on. That's quite the challenge as we go through. Let's keep talking about more on your robot here. Let's go into the uh, elevator that you're doing. I'd love to hear more about uh, what's going on for that, Robert. So talk to me about how that design has come to fruition uh, as, of course, as we start to follow the Cuban code journey through your robot. Yeah, so um, our elevator this year is very similar to elevator designs that we've had in the past where we have the chain on each side that is driven by a SIM gearbox on the bottom connected to a lower shaft. Um, just lifting a carriage up. Uh, one of the things that we did differently this year is we had it so that our elevator bar that it rides on is actually sloped uh, at a 20 degree um, incline. That allows us that not only are we changing our, putting our center of gravity more towards the center of the robot for climbing and movement, but also as the robot lifts the elevator up, the arm heads goes forward, meaning we need a shorter extension for our arm. So I've seen uh, telescoping robots, I've seen cascading robots so far. Are uh, you guys going with a, a big chain? Why was that a great solution for Geared Forward? Um, we like the big one chain single stage elevators because they tend to be very reliable and easy to construct and maintain for us. They're, I mean, they're very robust. It's not going anywhere. We don't have to worry about cords or anything like that on as you would on a multi-stage. And talking about your arm here, we'll kind of demo it in a little bit as well too, but I'd love to just hear how that structure's worked out, especially that pivot or that wrist uh, kind of area uh, on your arm. How has that all worked out for your team? Yeah, so this main bar right here at the top of our elevator actually acts as the pivot point for our arm, which gives us some extra stability in there when we're using this gearbox. Uh, this gearbox is just a chain to the gear, uh, from the main bar to the lower uh, that just allows our arm to tip down and up uh, before extending. Can we uh, see a little demo of that, kind of just uh, coming up and maybe a couple, kind of just explain as it's happening what the robot is going through during that time. So as it comes up, this energy chain allows our uh, energy, 
our well energy to make it up very smoothly so that we don't have any stutters. The arm comes down, swinging down to this angle for our top placement, and this part of the arm comes out again with this energy chain, making sure that our collector stays constantly powered. So as you race it up, you got a lot of weight kind of going up there. How do you compensate for your center of gravity? So one of the ways that we compensate it is again with having this elevator bar in the. Uh, towards the back, but also we have our battery and compressor far in the back as well, as far back as we could get them, which kind of brings more of that weight farther into the rear. We also have the three steel orange bars in the back that help to counterweight it as we're lifting. I got to ask since it got taken off right away, uh, as we uh, kind of move over to Aaron, uh, talking about the spoiler that you have here uh, on your robot. I love to hear uh, not just about the great aestheticness of it, but how it's actually uh, truly helping your robot accomplish the charge up game. Yeah, of course. Uh, our robot spoiler has helped keep uh, even traction across the, uh, the entire robot here. We can uh, rotate the robot here a little bit. So, uh, of course, there's a, a lot of uh, weight front loaded on the wheels now uh, with the arm fully uh, out and what helps that is our spoiler that uses uh, aerodynamics to help get some downforce yes. on those rear wheels and uh, helps us not tip. I mean I can't imagine when you're going uh, all like Dukes of Hazard over the uh, charging station how that really does keep you down on the ground as well too so uh, yeah. I'm interested to see how that works on the field as we watch you out there that's really cool. Yeah. yeah. How about some of the controls on the robot here what's gone into it from from that aspect and uh, anything you can kind of uh, showcase or show off from that side. Sure. Uh, uh, here's our collector. Uh, our collector this year we uh, opted for somewhat simple. Um, it wasn't simple to put together but in, in concept it works pretty well. What we've got here is a uh, two roller wheels that can actually inside and outside. The outside position is uh, gear measured out to be uh, the right size for the cubes, and the uh, inside position is measured out to be the right size for the cones. Um, this helps us get a good grip on the cones, and instead of shooting the cones out, we just drop them straight down, uh, which helps us place accurately onto the uh, grid. Additionally, there is uh, we use uh, motion um, magic we call like it motion profiling motion sort of profiling yeah, yeah. Uh, to get the arm in and out in time so if you uh, home position so th the home consists of two parts that go at the same time uh, of course the elevator coming down and the arm going back in at the same time um, and then if we go to the high place again uh, we can see that the arm comes out slightly delayed from the rest of the robot as to not crash into the rest uh, into this top bar here or our limelight um, there's a, a lot of limitations and soft limits that we incorporated into that uh, to ensure that we don't crash um, the arm into the rest of the robot because that uh, the thing that's most likely to break our robot this year is our robot. So, uh, last thing I just want to ask in here, I know she got a couple different durometer type wheels on it. When yeah. you were looking at like testing here uh, and also this block that's here too, how did you end up coming up with this? Because I'm guessing this wasn't the first thing you had. So how did no. you get to that spot? No. So we started with all green wheels because less less. Uh, more compliance would uh, help us get the cone in easier, and we were also using uh, 775s instead of bag motors sure. there. Uh, our bag motors are actually a choice because uh, uh, updating the rules allows us to run two bag motors off of one motor controller, so it helps us run less through the uh, energy chain. But uh, with the wheels here, it was uh, it was found out we switched to the orange wheels because blue and orange, right? And All right. They're they're not they're not too much more. Uh, uh, resistant than the green wheels, yeah. so we thought it wouldn't be a problem. During w one of our iterations of the proto the prototype, the collector, it really just didn't want to get the cues in right, cones in right. So we switched to the green wheels, and they've been working better ever since. Right, by the way, I love hearing that the wheels themselves are an aesthetic choice, but the spoiler is clearly a design choice on your robot. Yeah. Uh, so very interesting decision making here. Well, Garrett Ford, thank you so much for uh, showcasing your robot and what you have to have here. You have a phenomenal machine. So, of course, we mentioned back to back here at Midwest. Can't wait to see how you do uh, here as well, too. Good luck the rest of the way. Thank you very much. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University is looking for talented robotic students who want to continue learning and innovating in a hands-on real-world experience format. Kettering University representatives will be at dozens of FIRST events this season, including the championship. Go to kettering.edu slash FIRST to see which events you can meet a Kettering University representative. FRC competition season is here. Submit your favorite moments to FRC Clips of the Week by each Sunday at discord.gg slash FIRST updates now. Also, the FRC Top 25 poll is open Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern to Monday, 5 p.m. Eastern, where you can vote for your top 25 teams of the week at firstupdatesnow.com slash FRC Top 25.
Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.